Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office for Tuesday, January the 16th, 2024. In today's detailed weather forecast, we're keeping an eye on another winter storm that's going to drop into the Midwest in the Great Lakes and the Eastern Seaboard by the end of this week, followed by much wet weather and stormy conditions across California, Oregon, and Washington with a renewed threat for flooding. And then, of course, we're going to be looking at your temperature anomalies as a big warm-up is coming for many. So here's a look at the European model for this afternoon, and we can see, yes, it's snowing pretty good if you are in the extreme north eastern portion of the United States, such as if you're in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine, getting some pretty decent snow out of this winter storm that is moving through the area. But behind it, it's going to be much colder and, of course, drier, not much, much big storms to talk about. But guess what? It's not going to last for too much longer. As we go forward into tomorrow afternoon, we have snow that's going to be developing across the Intermountain West of Idaho, Montana, Washington, as well as Oregon in the higher elevations there, including for Colorado. And this is going to be the next winter storm that's going to be grazing the northern tier of the United States into the northeast. Yet again, we're going to do it two times over. So going forward now in a Thursday afternoon, there's that system. A little bit of snow showing up here on the European model. We're not talking a whole lot about accumulation here. Some light to moderate snow at times for the most part. And a little bit of snow falling across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region. Going forward, that system then develops further and moves into the eastern seaboard. So areas like Maryland, New Jersey, and Delaware are likely to get a little bit of a coating of snow, maybe a couple of inches at most. And then once that system departs, the cold Arctic air is going to be in place yet again. But then a big warm-up is coming because as we look back towards the west, there's going to be a lot of rainfall, okay? So all eyes on are on deck on California. There's actually hydrological statements out because of how much rainfall we're going to be seeing between Friday and now it looks like on Wednesday next week. So we could be looking at almost seven full days of rainfall, storm after storm after storm. And once we get these storm sequences, they bring a lot of rain. We usually end up seeing mudslides, debris flows, um, rises on small creeks, streams, and rivers, and some urban flooding as well. So keep that in mind. I'm going to be doing an update on my Sacramento Weather Center uh, YouTube page this afternoon if you all want to check that out. Link in the description below this video. Lake effect snow continues over Michigan, though, for the end of this week. Yep, you're going to get more accumulation. Yep, get used to it, right? Rain for California with Storm 1, and then uh, just kind of showery conditions on Saturdays, where I think this is going to go. So not too terrible of a day on your Saturday, and then the next impulse of moisture moves on in by Sunday afternoon. That's what the European model thinks is going to happen. We're going to get our next storm system. That one looks to be a lot more intense with heavier rainfall, stronger winds, and again, the potential for some more flood concerns as that swings its way through. That moves through, and then of course, things get more active for the Midwest. But look at where's the rain or where's the snow you might be asking. Well, not going to be around the Missouri area. You're going to have some melting snow because of the rain on top of it. That's going to exacerbate some um, flooding because you got a lot more runoff to deal with and then more rainfall for Arizona. Much warmer weather pattern is setting up, and that's why we're going to see rain all the way potentially up into Wisconsin and Minnesota by the time we go into the middle of next week. And then maybe more storms maybe thereafter hitting California towards the very end of the run, but more like Northern California is where we're thinking at this point. How much snowfall accumulation could you see out of the next several storms, depending on where you're at, right? This is combining everything, by the way. All right, so um, the storm system, the next winter storm, this is going to bring quite a bit of snowfall for Montana and portions of the Dakotas as well as portions there of Omaha, Nebraska. And then you can see here, 
Not very much in the way of snowfall accumulation, maybe about an inch to a couple of inches, maybe three inches at the very most. If we look at the GFS model, it has a different little outcome on it. And you can see a lot more snow certainly uh, for uh, that second system or that kind of last winter storm of, uh, of this period moves through, right? So you're, you're looking at maybe three to six inches of snow. The Canadian model, on the other hand though, if we look at that, also even more snow so it's very interesting to see that the european model is actually very generous at this mo moment so when we look at the national blend of models we're probably going to favor the european model since again you're we're probably only going to see maybe about an inch to maybe three inches at the very most the great lakes region continuing to see that lake effect snow so you're more than likely going to pick up an additional foot or so with the snow coverage all right and then of course for the northeast that system is likely to bring maybe an additional three to five inches of snow including for downtown new york as well as central pennsylvania upstate new york likely to get quite a bit between the lake effect snow and the storm snowfall itself across the west a lot of the high elevations will see the heaviest snow but a lot of the valleys because this is a warmer system we're not going to see a whole lot, maybe about an inch or less in many areas, but the higher elevations like the mountain peaks here, maybe two to four feet of snowfall yet to come through the early to the middle of next week. How much rainfall could fall with the next several storm systems that impacts the west and the deep south? Well, when we look at the west first, you could see as much as say five to eight inches of rainfall for northern California, for central California, more like one to three inches of rainfall. So that includes for the Sacramento area, as well as say Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon might see as much as three to five inches of rain over the next 10 days. Now, looking at the deep south here, you're going to transition into a more wet weather pattern. So you could expect to see two to four inches of rainfall. But again, depending on what model you look at, if we look at the GFS model, um, you know, and the, the 12Z run, because that's currently rendering, it's been showing quite a bit of rainfall down here for the deep south, like Louisiana and Texas, the areas that really need it a lot. When we look at the Canadian model, also a little similar with quite a bit of um, rain amounts, maybe as much as say six to eight inches, which is enough to cause some flood concerns. A lot of rain also across California, like I said, between these three models, potentially about uh, two to maybe three and a half inches. Now looking at your temperature anomaly forecast, yes, there are also temperature changes coming to the forecast. Keep that in mind. So while, oh, I'm enjoying the cold weather, you might want to take that all in because we're going to have a nice thaw out. Yes, you all are going to thaw out. The snow is going to kind of go away slowly but surely. And with the added rainfall coming, that snow is really going to dissipate pretty quickly. And it's going to cause a lot of problems on rivers, streams, and creeks. Okay. So going forward here, we can see a, one more blast of Arctic air moves through this weekend, right? You have temperatures anywhere between uh, 30 to 45 degrees below average, okay? When we look actually at the actual air temperature, you can see here over Iowa, temperatures could be negative 10 to negative 15 degrees, but it might feel like negative 40 to negative 50 because we're going to have some strong winds out of this, okay? We got those northwesterly winds that are going to be out there, and that just makes the air feel colder, right? So going forward, that cold Arctic air really moves out by early next week, all right? On January the 21st and the 22nd is where we think that the cold air is going to be. And then by the end of the forecast period, you can see much warmer conditions. So by the 24th and the 25th of January, look at how far above average these temperatures could be in um say if you're in saskatchewan manitoba uh alberta uh, as well as other areas see some really warm temperatures in fact you might see temperatures barely near freezing for wednesday morning how about that versus now you're seeing temperatures much colder up there right right, right now probably about negative 25 negative 30 but wow it's gonna warm up and you're going to love seeing the much warmer temperatures and this continues 
all the way beyond the forecast, all the way into the end of next week, which is the 26th of January, where you're likely to see near record or record breaking temperatures, including for Canada. Look at this. Temperatures up there almost 50 degrees above normal, potentially. That is insane versus the temperatures that you're seeing now that are negative 40 to negative 50. <laughs> you're going to see temperatures 30 degrees above zero. So that's a whole. 40 to 60 degree warm up than what you're used to right now. You're going to think it's very hot because of just the sudden warm up that's going to take place. The reason for a huge warm up across the United States is because eventually the Arctic Oscillation is going to be shifting into the positive territory. This means warmer temperatures further south, higher latitudes see a big warm up. Colder air usually resides uh, up there across the North Pole. When you look at our NAO as well, it is very similar here. So we're very much likely to see a big, big warm up by not this week, but by the early to the middle of next week. We're going to see some record breaking temperatures, guys. So I hope you all are ready for that. Wow. Even the Climate Prediction Center totally agrees with my forecast with a likelihood of seeing temperatures well above average potentially for the Great Lakes. So yeah, enjoy the cold weather, folks, because it's going to be changing pretty quickly over the weekend in early next week. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's detailed weather forecast. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. If you did, please consider subscribing. If you're new to the channel, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. And I will definitely keep you updated on this big weather pattern change. Flooding out west, big time rains, big time snows for the higher elevation, and definitely some very mild temperatures coming for the Midwest. I'll have more on this weather story in the next couple of days. Also, if you're interested, be sure to join the Weather Force Discord server today. There is a link in the description below this video. Also, be sure to check out my Twitter page. There's a link in the description also to that. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I will be back with you more soon with more weather content.